right, so welcome to the studio tonight. Tonight I am going to do a little review on some uh, paint brushes. These are brush pens, water brushes, wa water br brush pens, water brushes. These are my water brushes I've just gotten uh, a couple weeks ago. I've been trying them out. These are the Pilot uh, water brushes, and I have to tell you, I think these are lights out. So if in the past you have seen me do a review of some Pilot water brushes, I use them all the time. This happens to be my uh, travel kit that I keep in the back of my car, and in it I've got, well, some some bigger water brushes that I don't like quite as much, but I've got my little Pilot ones right here, and I think these are just lights out fantastic in them. I think you can tell, I don't know if you can see it, <laughs> the uh, bristles on that one are all stained blue from painting water and sky and whatnot. Uh, but these are the big brothers, these ones. Let me show you these. It's very exciting. It comes in this nice little pack. Uh, you can put them back in here. I've been putting them back in here. They keep it nice and safe. But unlike the smaller pack, with this one, you get a couple of really nice, big, fat, uh, big, fat, flat brushes. Here's one. Here's two. And this one should be the third one, right? Three different sizes of them. And I'll tell you what, this brush here makes it very easy to put a lot of paint on a paper very quickly. Then, of course, it comes with three, one, ah, let's get it there, two and three rounds, uh, each of different sizes, a large, a medium, and a small, just like uh, one, two, three, whoops, I guess maybe they're backwards, just like their little brother here, exactly the same, and uh, I'm going to do a little experiment here with us. I'm just going to get one of my travel kits. This one happens to be Prima watercolors. This is, from the looks of it, the tropical set, and we're going to put a little bit of paint to paper just so you can see how uh, these are and I really should stop reaching over here over there uh, when I'm in the studio that's my habit I just kind of reach in I should say my water bottle is over there uh, but with these just like all uh, water brushes they've got a little indentation on the halfway through the hilt you can just push and little droplets of water will come out. Hope you can see that. Let's do it like that. There you go. Just a slight little push and they re-moisten themselves. So uh, let's do this. Let's grab, I don't know, let's just start here. Let's grab some of this. Looks like cyan maybe. And just a couple of quick uh, brushes on there. You can see it grabs and picks up a lot of paint. It wets that up really nicely. And then I can just dab a little bit. I'm going to step to the side. I'm going to get just a little towel and brush this off. Just give it a little squeeze and we can coax that color all the way down just like that. Just like we're using a regular paint brush. I am going to clean this one out after I'm done using it because I know that that red pink really stains. Now I've got a pink brush which is totally fine with me. And we can go from that large one, I just did it again. I'm gonna take that water away. Uh, all the way to this little tiny one. Just gonna grab some green here. And right next to it, a part of this is the fact that these paints, these Prima paints really do wet really nicely, really quickly. So I got a little bit of spatter there. When I squeezed this, you see I'm just giving it ever such a slight little squeeze and bringing that right down and just so beautifully it flows down there. You can really, with a little practice, you really can't control the water on these with these. Or what I do a lot of times is I'll just squeeze a lot of water on. Oh, look at that. It looks like I didn't even clean it. You can squeeze some water on 
with your larger brush. There we go. Just like that. Then use a smaller brush. Oh, I didn't, I didn't dip. I wanted to, but I didn't do it. Let me grab another color here. And then you can go back in with whatever color you want. And that'll blend out that way. There we go. Just kind of like that. So what I thought I would do, now that you've seen the brushes, you see how they work. I thought we would just do a quick little painting uh, with them. And I'm going to use these. We're going to do it right in front here. And I'm actually going to take my water. Here it is. And I'm going to put it on the floor. That way I'm not tempted to use it. So now if you see me reach up in the corner, you see that hand jet out. There's nothing even there. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to start with some nice water on here. There we go. Now, well, now using this, I've used quite a bit of that water. We're going to start with a nice sky up here. And I'm only going to add paint to the top. There we go. Just dab it off a little bit and I'm going to pull that right on down. There's my sky. Just like that. Now, if I give it just a second, and you can see even by just wiping this, I hope you can see, it's pretty much cleaned itself off. Um, I love these. These are so nice. I'm going to grab just a little bit smaller one. I'm going to look at my page here. Still a little bit moist, so I've got to keep on talking. I, uh, the caps on these, while I'm waiting for this to dry, the caps on these big ones have really nice big caps. They're easy to get on and off, and they're pretty sturdy. One thing I don't like about these is the the green cap, the green holder that they have on these really just kind of pops out pretty simply. Um, I should put it, maybe if I put it down here, let me see, maybe I'll zoom in a little bit. There we go. That little cap pops right off. They do pop right back on. There you go. Here's another one. It, well, that one's on pretty good. Oh, this one I went to pick it up and it fell off. So they do come off a little bit, but they go right back on. Maybe if I put a little bit of glue in there, that would hold it. But that is one annoyance I found in these in what is otherwise really a pretty nice set. So we're not quite dry there, but we're going to forge ahead anyways. I'm going to put, oh, let's see what I'm going to put. A little hill out in the distance back here. So I'm going to put a little brown, mix it with a little bit of this blue, maybe just a dab of green. There we go. And a drop of water right in there to thin it a little bit. There he goes. And I'm going to set a mountain right there, or a hill anyways, maybe not a mountain. There it is. It goes something like that. And I'm going to I'm just going to clean this off by squeezing it into my paper towel. Just give a little squeeze and rub back and forth. It's going to clean all that bristle off and leave it just a little damp. I'm just going to pull this down ever so slightly. There we go, because in front of that we're going to put another hill. I'm going to green this up just a little bit. There we go. That's going to look like it's just in front, and I'm going to decide where I want my mountain to be, my next hill, and I think it should come in something like this. Maybe it can go up this side. There we go. And a little bit more of that paint. Just so simply and easily, and I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to let it, I'm going to squeeze it into my paper and just rub it back and forth just a little bit, and it's going to clean those bristles off for me. It leaves it just a little bit damp. I'm trying to work a little quickly here. 
maybe I shouldn't, but I'm going to pull that down and just let that blend all the way down into the bottom. And I feel like I'm Bob Ross doing this. Just let it blend, some cross hatch pattern. There we go, two hairs and some air. All right, in front of that, I think I'm going to put, oh, I don't know what I'm going to put. I'm just making this up as I go along. I think I'm going to put, oh, a tree in here and maybe a little stream. You know what? I'm going to put a little stream that comes from in here. Let's see if I can do something with this. I'm going to get just a little mixture, and I think my stream is going to start right about here. It's going to meander up this way. I'm going to get a little, change my color just a little bit. I should have done it a little lighter back there. Let's see if I can pull a little bit of that color off. And my stream is coming up here. You know what I need? Ta da! I happen to have it. Bigger brush. There we go. Give me a, just a little bit of that purple in there. Just a touch of that blue. There we go. There is my stream coming this far down. It needs to be a little wider. If I make it a little wider in the front here, it's going to look a lot closer and a lot bigger. There we go, just by making it a little bit darker, a little bit bigger, it looks like it's a little bit closer. I'm going to put a few dark lines in here, there are maybe ripples or dark spots in that creek, that river, whatever it is here. And I'm just, again, I'm just rubbing my brush on here, trying to keep it cleaned off a little bit. There we go. Now along this creek, I know there are, I'm just going to grab any of these, where's my, there it is. I know we've got some bushes and trees along the edge of this creek. I'm going to put some back here. Just coming down to the water's edge down here. You get a little different color in there too. I want to mix a few of these colors. There we go. I don't want any one to dominate too much if it doesn't have to. Just coming right on down. Let me maybe a little ochre in there. Let's dab and get that a little bit wet. There we go. Just a mix of some colors. And grab it and pull it right on up there. Just like that. I think that's pretty good on that side. On this side, I'm just going to give the indication of some far away trees back there. There we go. And our grass right in front. Whoa, I got a little extra water. Right after I said you were able to control that fairly easily. I got a little bit more water there than I really wanted. There we go. I just don't want to have all of that same color running in there. I want to mix that a little bit. Maybe there's a little beach area right there. Some gravelly, dirty kind of colors there. We're getting really close down here so we can be more intense, more vibrant with our colors. There we go, we're gonna come back and finish that up. Now on this side, maybe we've got another little sand, the, the, the sand comes right across our picture here. There we go, right on through and up that hill. I'm gonna paint that kind of in that direction. And I'll bet that'll take your eye straight up there. And you'll think that there's a little hill right there, whether there is or not. I don't know, but 
because I've painted it with those strokes, you're going to think, your eye's going to think, it goes just that way. There we go. And I'm not, I'm not doing anything. I, I don't know, really out of the ordinary or anything. I'm just kind of dabbing on a little color. I'm going to get a little closer here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to vary my colors in here so that it doesn't look too uniform. There we go. And right in here, I'm going to get really bold, really dark with some green. You know what? I want a little brown right down here by the water's edge. So let me grab that. There we go. There. I'll just push that right out into the water. Just like that really quickly. And back up here. Oop, a little water on my tin. Grab some of that ochre. And I know that's probably just off camera for you. I'm trying to hurry. I'm trying to... There we go. Now we can go back over to this side. I'm going to take my fine one, my little tiny one. I'm going to grab a mixture of my brown and my ochre. And I'm just going to... Whoa. Just go underneath some of these areas. And it will look as though maybe there's just a little bit of dirt showing under some of these areas. You could use a different color. You know, you could use you could use a blue or or whatnot if you really wanted to. I kind of got in the habit of using brown, especially right around uh, the water. If I think it's the bank of the of the river or the the flow in there uh, I, again you don't have to it's a personal preference you could you could use lots of different colors in there uh, I am going to go back in on this side it's still a little bit wet I'm gonna take some of my additional color and I'm just gonna drop in well, uh, nothing really just some marks here and there this is all the color I've got mixed up on my palette already. Let me do this. Zonk, zonk right out. I'm just using this puddle that was there before. And you can do some lines up like this. You could do it with some browns. Right? You could make some grasses in here or some reeds out. Just pull up here and there few spikes of weeds or grasses. The only thing you want to be careful with is if you're if they're closer in your picture this way, they've got to be a little bit bigger. If they're a little further back, they can be a little bit smaller. I'm going to put coming out of here, I'm going to put ooh, right there. Now I do sound like Bob Ross. Ooh, right there. Some old craggy tree and watch this. Oops, I need a little bigger one. Where's my bigger one? Here's the next one bigger. We'll just use that. I'm just going to drop in. It's got to be a little bit stronger than the color around it. There we go. Instant tree. Right there. We just put that and there's probably... I'm going to go right back into... This is my river color right here. There's got to be a little bit of a shadow around that tree. Just drop in a little bit of that color. Well, there we are. We did it. I just want to put in a few more lines here and there. A couple bits of grass growing. Add a little bit of detail. And there you go, I'm going to call that good. I know it's not the most technically advanced painting in the world. It's a quick painting, 15 minutes, if that. Uh, but I wanted to demonstrate to you that the Pilot water brushes here really can be a nice tool for you. They're very nice brushes. Uh, they're, they're really cheap. Uh, I think I got these, a pack of six. The three flats, the three rounds, I think I got them for, I don't know, eight, ten bucks. It really was not much. Um, 
and uh, you can you can use them. I, I'll, in fact, I'll tell you what, I will use them on a recent vacation, and I'll show you exactly what I painted with it. Oh, where's it at? There you go. There's my actual painting that I did with these brushes. This was oh 20, 25 minutes sitting down, just talking with people who came around to see me. Uh, while I was painting and explaining to them what I'm doing and uh, it worked out great. It was a lot of fun. Anyways, okay, that's off topic. What I really want to say is water brushes, these pilot water brushes, great. Their little brothers are great and um, I love them. These are going right back into my travel kit right over here, sitting right in the back of my car so I have them when I need them. That's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed my little talk on the Pilot water brushes. We'll see you in the studio next time. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.